In this episode of Negative Modifier, we'll be playing the game Delta Green. Delta Green, by design, tackles various mature themes that may be uncomfortable or triggering for listeners. Listener discretion is advised. All right, so where we left off last time, you had received a kind of strange message with a, quote, green box location and address under more of a of geo coordinates you could navigate to. Agent Jumper was missing an arm. Fully going insane. I was gonna say the weird was definitely kicking off in a major way. Yeah, so you, uh, you, you'd met uh, kind of Charles Xanthus. You'd made his acquaintance, if you will. You're having a hard time finding him though after a trip to the lake. Uh, definitely like saw nobody some... around, right? Yeah, you can hear them, but you can't find them. No. So it's about midday. I say we just get in the truck and and go to these coordinates. Yeah, I agree. Before we lose any more arms here, we got to get going. See what's in this box and maybe help us solve this mystery. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, do you think this is Miss Pine that's sending us this? Or she probably figured we were here and wants her to wants us to do our dirty work. Uh, it could be her uh, accountant who's a. Uh, a little more ambiguous. Who was given orders? Yeah, I guess it doesn't matter. It wouldn't. Well, yeah. Let's go. We have no better option. Let's go check it out. I agree. Well, so I guess like this may sound weird. Someone want to try and search the phone number? Well, you said it had too many numbers and not enough. Too numbers, many and so. not enough simultaneously. So is that searchable? You can try. All right. I'll do it. 37 out of 74 success. Yeah, so you just kind of dump the numbers into a search engine, not expecting to find anything, and you do find something, oddly enough. It is allegedly the kind of automated contact system for the medical facility, uh, supervised nursing home, whatever the correct phrase is, for Agent Jumper's mom. Uh, It says here that the... uh... Phone number is for Southern Oaks Care Facility? Yeah. Does that mean anything to anybody? Well, yes. Um, what? Okay. Um, I knew it. I knew it. They got to my mom. What are you talking about? Delta Green is using my mother. They wanted us to come here all along. They're the ones who probably planted that message into my mom. You're saying your mom is at Southern Oaks? Well, yeah, that's her nursing home. Yeah, that's a little weird. All right. Um, you know what, Jumper? I, gu- I guess so. I guess that's entirely possible. That I take back what I said that uh, it was... Uh, uh, you're right. They, the organization could be messing specifically with your mother. I, I, I do believe that now. All right. So you've kind of driven a distance away from town. We'll probably say you're a couple miles out. Uh, Jumper, give me a POW test at plus 20. All right. Wow. Uh, I failed with an 81 out of 60. All right. So the good news, there's this loud kind of sickening, almost pop sound in the car where your arm should be and suddenly you feel like the inside of your clothing is wet and cold like you've just been swimming all of a sudden the bad news is everyone else hears that so everyone give me a kind of uh sandy test real quick tackle 54 out of 72 success all right 89 out of 73 failure at like yoten uh 33 out of 50 critical success Cool. Does that mean I get some sandy back? Yep, you get one point of sand back. Okay. Do we, do we ever do we ever figure out because I'm still one below my breaking point? So you'd be back at your breaking point hypothetically, right? No, I, I, with the one I was two below my breaking point, so okay, now, yeah, now you're, I'm one you're, below. You're still broken technically. Okay. We're all broken. But and, okay, because we're in the same mission, we won't have resolved that yet. Is the idea? Yeah. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Did you Take need stop. one from me as well? Yep, I need one from you as well. Oh. 
This is sad. Uh, I fumbled with 100 out of 20. All right, so if you fail, <laughs> give me a 1d6. It, it, in so many ways, this is apropos of what's about to happen to Agent Jumper, so this this feels almost right in kind of a sick way. Um, if you passed, if everyone, if you passed except for Yoten, who got a critical, just take one sand damage. Uh, and do we take sand damage equivalent to what we rolled? Yep. Top of this, whoever was driving, give me a drive skill, a drive check. This is a surprising and horrifying event. I'll be driving. Horrifying event. Failure. <laughs> you want a twenty-four? <laughs> Yeah, so everyone in the car is a little bit rattled by this. Like, suddenly, just kind of, you have Agent Jumper just screaming all of a sudden, as just kind of like, she's like, her arm's back, as best you can tell, but it's wet and gross and, like, covered in, like, sea slime, almost, or something akin to that. Like, it's it's very obviously back. Like, the, it's physically there kind of thing, but it's something off about it, definitely. And the car, you kind of, so... The car does swerve off the road some, so everyone give me kind of a 1d6 test on this one. Jackal got a 5. Jesus, Jackal, you did a number on your team. So yeah, you hit the brakes and kind of skid in the car. It doesn't flip, but it rocks over enough that everyone's tossed around a little bit, and they take that damage that you all rolled. Probably a bunch of you weren't wearing seatbelts. Well, shit. I was wearing my seatbelt and only took one. This is just straight out of eight. So I, I rolled a five, so I'm taking, yeah, just five points yep. of damage straight up. Yep. From us. Okay. Shit. Failure is technically a crash. Fumble's a bad crash. All right. I don't like that at all. I'm now down to seven hit points. You detend some first aid in a couple of minutes if you want to pull over to the side of the road and kind of catch your breath and maybe inspect jumpers returned I, new I who knows what arm. arm. Yeah. What's around us right now? Like how? Just feel. It's like it's it's a pretty innocuous place to pull off. Again, like you're in the middle of nowhere, so someone pulling off to the side of the road wouldn't be all that weird, hypothetically. Are there are there any places we can actually get away from the road? Like a oh yeah, this crossroad like, there's probably, or yeah, there's probably some crossroads you could take and stuff like that if you so wanted to. Every so often, yeah, right. it, it might be rest stops. There's plenty of opportunities to kind of pull off on little dirt stuff on the sides of the road and stuff. Son of a bitch, Jackal. Pull over. What the hell just happened? I don't know. My arm's back. Is your arm back? Oh my. I, what? What the F? Is everyone okay? Who's hurt? I hit my head pretty bad. Does my arm function? Your arm's fine. But so, you gotta check out the arm now, though? Yes. Alright, so do a search on your arm. That's awesome. Search my arm. Search. There we go. Hey, I got a 20 out of 45. Yeah, so you kind of roll the sleeve up as fast as you can, and it's definitely your arm, especially where, but it's pale, like left like left in a bathtub way too long, pale. Like it's pruned, it's wet, like every inch of it, like is kind of like it's been like you've been swimming for days or weeks or maybe months kind of thing. Like it's it's the arm of someone that has been lost, like in a body of water for an extended period of time that was cold. Like it's got that kind of like swimming in December type of temperature to it. Like touching it is indeed cold. You can see all the veins in it, kind of thing. It's very pale, almost translucent on the skin level. Like it's it's warming up, but like it's been somewhere that it really that was quite wet, as best you can tell. Freaking me out! Any unusual smells? Ah, uh, the smells of maybe some water and stuff like that, but nothing that pops out at you, especially beyond, like, I. it smells of damp dog is maybe the way of thinking of it. Like, when it came back, it came back hard and wet and gross. And it's, like, I'm, I'm gonna, like, uh, yeah, just dig into the back and grab my bag and, like, pull out shirt and maybe a towel or something to just try to wrap it up and warm up my arm. Well, I got my arm back. Can you move your fingers? Uh, kind of, yeah. It makes Just, me look dead. I kind of feel... You know... Okay, I... I... 
I have to ask this, and I'm sorry if this... Are we sure that it was gone? Maybe it went invisible or something? Yeah, it was gone. I mean, I we moved my hand through the area where my arm should have been. I think it was inside that lake. And then when we got far enough away, it came back. Yeah, and I know that we've seen some shit, but as far as that's concerned, that makes less sense than, I don't know, all of us just being, um, you know. There's two stones in that lake. It goes to somewhere else. And you're saying that's not crazy, but us moving away from the lake got me my arm back is. It could be illusory. Is all I'm saying. I, I th- that makes more sense to me. I'm just trying to make sense of a situation that is seriously uncom, seriously strange. Well, we heard it pop, sense. and it was wet, and like if it was just invisible, we would have seen some of these other symptoms before wetness, whatever. Nothing just makes right sense. back. Just let go. Nothing makes sense. And like to explain the car accident, some um, it came back loud. Like its return was not some kind of like small thing. Like it like made the sound like almost a suction seal breaking or something like that. It was a you all heard it very prominently. So does this mean that if we get far away from that lake, we're immune from its weirdness? Probably, it probably only has a limited effect. At least for now. There is that. This seems like somebody who wants to create things like this all over the greater United States. I mean, he's helped out lots of places. What if, uh, and again, I, I, you, can, you can vote me down all you want. What if Xanthus, what if he got into our heads? What if he got into your mother's head? And he's like a hypnotist or something? I'm just what? saying, that makes way more sense than... Her arm was in a Tucson Black Lake. I don't know. I, Are you I saying just, Ben Fierce is in cahoots with Delta Green? No, I'm saying he's in opposition to Delta Green, probably. And that I don't think the organization necessarily, although we have some more evidence now, messed with your it messed you know, planted anything in your mother's head. It, it's just a uh, I'm just trying to rationalize here. I'm sorry. You you don't think it's beyond Delta Green's ability or purview to mess with a sick woman to get me to do what they want me to do or want them to do. I didn't say it was outside of their abilities. I said it was less likely than the situation that I suggested. I'm saying that the forces that we are in opposition to are also aligned against Delta Green. Whether or not we are still in that group, we don't know. But it's still an enemy of our enemy situation. And when I'm trying to put the pieces together here, that's what I got. I'm sorry. I think we're just all still pawns, just like we always were. Jackal touches his forehead and finds a little blood there, I think. I'm going to look for a first aid kit back. Anybody else need anything? Yeah, you can attempt a first aid check while, while you're standing here, actually, yeah. What do I roll for first aid? Well, you have to do a first oh, aid first check aid. first. Oh, yeah, here it is. Ooh, 77 out of 30, fumble. You make it worse. Spray something on it. <laughs> I think it's a full D. Let me double check on this one. I believe it's you have to. It's either one additional point of damage taken or it's a full D6 or a D4. If you have the kit for it, I guess, that does, it, that does give you a boost, though, too. Did you apply that to your roll? Um, no. I do have a first kit, a kit in my duffel. What would that be, plus 10 or something? I think it's plus 20. I still would have failed. Yeah. All right. Jackal, keep, quit messing with your own head. Come here. Ah. Uh, you say plus 20. Can I roll first aid? I have it. Yeah, but you can only roll, you can only roll first aid once, I guess, though, too. That's part of the problem. So it's only, only I hand. can? No, so you only can do a first aid check once against an injury. You can't kind of keep rolling till someone in the party manages to get it to work. Oh, so I can't now attempt it on him. Yeah. Okay. Should I attempt somebody it on else? Attempt, attempt it on yeah, Jotun. 
Or can I attempt yeah. it on myself? Yes, you can. At a plus 20, you said? Yep. Nope, failed. Not critical. But it's a, uh, sorry, a 56 out of a modified 52. Yeah, so it's 1d4 for the HP damage you took as part of that fumble. And for my 1d4? Yep. Just one. Maybe a slip and kind of push on a rib you shouldn't have or something like that. And I guess, like, for reference on the car crash, mathematically the most dangerous weapon in Delta Green is a boat running at full speed into something because it's based off the mass of the vehicle. <laughs> There's some funny math that happens around that stuff. Like, it's possible. It's like, okay, so it, technically speaking, just the heaviest object we can find can hit with more damage than a nuclear bomb. That makes sense based on the rules. But yes, no. Yeah, so it's some roadside weirds going on. Jumper has her arm back. You've kind of not done a great job patching yourself back up, unfortunately. You're probably a bit shaken at this point. Well, somebody else is getting behind the wheel. I'm sorry. I think I hit my head on the windshield. I'll take over. Please, jet lag. We might want to think about getting Jackal to a hospital or something. I think I'm fine for now. Well, I think either way, we got to continue on to this green box. Whether it was hypnotism or another universe or whatever, we're out of its range no matter what. So we should get to that green box before it extends and maybe changes our perception even further. Sounds good. Everybody, yeah, in good enough shape to roll. Let's go. I got my arm back. I'm good. (laughs) All right, so we drive on. Did you ever actually not have your arm, though? That's the real question. I think it was there the whole time, but in a different place. Yeah, so you drive and you drive and you kind of you wind up just in the sticks. You thought you were already in the sticks, but you kind of you happen upon what looks like a maybe it's deserted. Maybe it's just really shittily managed. You can't quite tell which way it goes on this one storage facility, kind of like the place you stashed all the uh, research you found that one time. But yeah, so a couple flickering lights like the gate doesn't even close anymore as it both looks abandoned, but also like if it someone cares enough to kind of keep the power going, so that's a thing, I guess. You gotta try and find the box, or what's the plan? Yeah. Yeah, which unit? Do we know which unit it's in? Can we just drive up to it, or do we gotta... Yes, it is um, unit 916. So yeah, and it's pretty easy to find. The numbers are sequential, and most of the storage lockers are really shittily maintained, and this one's no exception. It's just the door appears to actually work and it appears to actually be in like, you know, not smashed into condition. There's a couple other examples of this here, but yeah, door 916 is definitely the most not destroyed by something else or not kind of someone tried to force it open. Uh, give me a search, though. Sure. 30 out of 74 success. Jackal got a one critical. Yeah, I was going to say, so actually the critical yeah, gives you a big 30 boost. out of 45 as well with the success. Yeah. Successes across the board. So you all yeah. notice something weird about this. So the number for box 916, it's not the same as all the other ones. The other ones are kind of written very kind of template style just across the box. 916 is almost artistic's the wrong phrase, but it's got more personality. And Agent Jackal also notices the fact that this isn't sequential by any measure. It's almost, it's between box 23 and box 24. Everything except this box is sequential. So do we arrive at it just like kind of walking down the aisle or something? Yeah. Uh, this one seems out of place. 23, 916, 24. Now that you're thinking about it, there's not there's maybe maximum a hundred loca- storage lockers in this entire facility, maybe, and maybe they're numbering the rows by hundreds or something. But this should not be here where it's at. Does nine one six mean anything to anyone? Nine one six. I don't know. It's like the, all the all the other ones look busted in, but September sixteenth. LA's area code backwards adds up to 16. Yeah, I got nothing. Which is divisible by four. There's four of us. Do you open the box? Yeah, I think we gotta open it. 
Yeah, so there's not even a lock on this, you realize, now that you're looking at it. It's kind of, it slides open and up, and you're not sure what you're expecting, but it's just a storage locker on the inside of it. It's, um, compared to the green box you've been, it's kind of almost mundane by comparison, but faintly as kind of you're standing outside of it, you swear you can hear the sounds of being backstage at a play. You hear kind of the faint calls for five minutes and places and stuff like that and kind of final checks. But there's no speakers in there. Hell, there might not even be power running inside of it. But you can definitely kind of hear the faint echoes of of many people preparing for a play. Well, it appears to be haunted. Sound like a stage or something to anybody? I guess it could be that. Is there anything in the box? Can, can like yeah, there's a bunch of boxes and stuff like that. Like you could probably go look at it if you want to. Just I guess you need kind of the instantaneous stuff you saw when you opened up the door. Yeah, so inside there are a collection of kind of cardboard boxes you can sort through. There's also kind of taped to the back wall a um, looks like a list of some kind. Ooh, I want to look at the list. All right, so as you so as you get closer to the wall, the sounds of the backstage intensify. They're never like deafening, but they're hard to miss now. Like it definitely feels, at least audibly, like you are somewhere backstage of a play about to start. And the list is strange. So it it details out as best you can tell everything in the box. It lists some um, one mysterious lighter four Delta Green agents, and then it has your actual names to the side of it, kind of thing. Eight boxes of um, tourism brochures, one guide to the suburbs of Carcosa, and just kind of some other just general kind of paperwork that re- seems to relate it to like land acquisitions and stuff like that. Is that well? I mean, that's interesting. I'm going to show everybody the list. Agent names or real names? Real names, and the agent names actually. It's got like it has like Delta Green Agent One dash your code name dash your real name. So is that uh, us on there? Yeah. Okay. Honestly, I don't know what's more confusing. The arm or that? Somebody plant that here? So as you're all looking at this list, you see kind of at the bottom the word three cockroaches appear. And kind of you see some cockroaches skitter across the floor into the box, pause, then skitter out. And then you see the words vanish. Everyone give me a sand check. Jackal, Lady 7, failure. I need to stop looking at stuff. 66, critical success. 65 out of 17, failure. Yoten, uh, 84 out of 51, failure. All right, so if you failed, 1d4 sand damage. Uh, remember, we haven't done this much. You can offload sand damage onto your bonds, which is a POW test if you so want to do that. It does reduce your POW, though, if you do it. I know I mentioned it once or twice, but no one's actually ever done this. It's kind of using your bonds as armor at that point. Oh, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that. All right, so give me a POW test. I failed. Never mind. All right. Um, Neural old max. Yeah. All right, so everyone that kind of is not offloading their bonds, subtract that from their sanity. And you are going to take... So that loss, it's uh, roll 1d4 now. Just uh, jumper? Yep, just jumper. So you lose that... So you take the full sand damage you rolled initially, and you now lose that from your pow. Oh, okay. Um, like, from my willpower points or from my POW score? From your power points or willpower points, yeah. So, okay, power can be spent, for lack of a better phrase, to offload some of this stuff. Well, surprisingly, I have not hit my new breaking point yet. Yep. Or I have only one away. So it's like, as your sanity gets lower, you get worse at staying sane. Oh, sorry, I did that wrong. My bad. So, it's just, so if you wanted to offload... I thought I knew I got that wrong. So yeah, sorry. If you wanted to offload that sand point, you still you can you can take that one sand off of it. But you can also subtract one sand from the damage you take. So you burn that one sand point. You subtract that one from 
Sorry, you didn't have to roll the willpower check on that. My bad. I got confused with another mechanic. Yeah, so you can subtract that one willpower from the sand damage you took, but also then you subtract the damage you took away from the bo- uh, uh, targeted bond, for lack of a better phrase, by the same amount. Mm-hmm. So in your case, you lost... Um, what was it? I lost four. Yeah, so you can reduce that down to three. You can reduce it down to one, but then you're also still you're still losing that one power, and you're still losing that one off of your bond. Okay. Bond of your choice. All right. Done deal. Done it. Yep. Now I'm two points away from my new breaking. Which bond did you go after, out of curiosity? Uh, my um, on and off again, uh, casual lover. Yeah. I'm I... just losing connection with everybody. Yeah. No, but you kind of like, you feel the situational strain of this. Like, it's starting to finally eat away at your relationships. Like Delta Green's taken so much from you. Your Sandy is wavering. Like your, your, your mom is apparently cahoots with can them. I really trust anyone. Exactly. Is anything real? Exactly. Maybe well, this friend of yours is a plant. Maybe they're Delta Green all along. Maybe they're the reason you're here. Maybe they put the note there even. They know your name after all. This game has suspicious parallels to real life mental disorders. Yes. By design. <laughs> All right, cool. So yeah, you've you've checked this list. You've seen that it's telling you exactly what's in the box with you, down to the second refresh rate, for lack of a better phrase. You got to check any of their boxes. I want to find one of those travel brochures. Yeah, so they're pretty easy to find. It's just kind of you pop open one of the cardboard boxes, and inside of it, it's kind of like promotional, like not cheap, but not like good tourism pamphlets for that are encouraging you to visit the newest the newest suburb of Carcosa, Brookville. It's up and coming, it's new, it's a, it's got that small town quaint charm to it. Just look at it on the outskirts down by the lake. Is it showing buildings or anything or streets because Yeah, it, it's it's the town you've been in. Yeah, it's, but it's like a nicer version of it, but also like there's something wrong about that you can't quite put your fixer uh, can't quite put your uh, finger on. Like it's almost like the it's like paintings, like they're not actual pictures. They're like there's a stylized aspect to it, as would make sense for kind of a travel brochure of some kind. Uh, weirdly enough, though, there's a map at the back of it, though. It kind of shows this big lake. And it says it has, the, it has a star in the town or the city of Carcosa, and then kind of off to one side, it shows like Brookville. It shows like a map of Brookville off to the side. No, just kind of like a travel map, like a proximity map, if you will. Mm-hmm. You, you know what I'm talking about. On the back of those things, they have like, hey, here's the major landmark, and we're just that direction from it, down the I-5. Now, you said there was, like, uh, deeds and stuff, right? Land yeah. uh, transfer paperwork? Yep. Well, yeah, let's pull those out next. Yeah, so they're a, it's, it's a weird mix. So a bunch of them have this kind of, like, Old timey. Someone give me a history check on this, actually. Ooh, got that. Got a two out of twenty uh, out of forty-one. Where was that two when I needed it earlier? <laughs> yeah, so uh, it's weird. Like, so it's a mix of very modern, if not like maybe like slightly older, like eighties, seventies land deeds and stuff like that. And every so once in a while, you find that like has almost a like a. Victorian or Renaissance era feel to it. It's got the kind of fancy lettering, the papers of a different quality. There's an aged quality to it. Like as you're going through this, it's almost like there's a collection of land deeds and ownerships and paperwork for the land spread out across centuries. But as best you can tell, none of it conflicts with itself, even though like it's there's no overlap of any of these locations. Are the locations um like all for right here or just places around the world? Uh, give me an in check on that. You wouldn't have a really good way of knowing that necessarily. Like it's based on your kind of quick search. It seems to be all located where you are, but if you want to kind of extrapolate off of that. 52 out of 55 failure. Yeah, no, it it looks like it's all local, but like it's, you're not local enough to kind of have a sense of what all these different like little regionalities mean or something like that. It, especially when they all do say Kansas. Um, now are they all going to like a certain sailor uh, or like holdings 
Uh, some of them are just kind of proof of ownership. Some of them do seem to be kind of bank deals. Uh, a couple of them refer to just kind of the land being thiefed over to the king of some kind. Going back to the brochures briefly, are are they all the same in the boxes? Like I think you said there are eight boxes. Yeah, it's all it's all just kind of a bunch of ads to come. A couple different versions of it, but they're all kind of ads to come to Brookville, Carcosa. The newest town in Carcosa. Has anyone ever heard of Carcosa? I guess I'll start by asking that. Uh, out of game jumper you have. Right? Yeah, her, your mom mentioned it. Well, yes, but... I mean, it's a made-up place, right? Well, somebody printed it on these things. My mom mentioned Carcosa, but it's a made-up thing. I mean, she is insane. Or, well, somebody launched a, a whole tourism effort here. I mean, is that a nearby city in Kansas or something? Like, what do they mean suburb? What's your language skill again, Yoten? Norwegian. And what's the skill level? Oh, 30? Yeah, that's enough that you recognize the, the, the word is possibly French. The word car- carcoso? It's a French-seeming word. I don't know. It sounds uh, <laughs> French to me. I don't know how... Uh... A city in Kansas can become a suburb to a city in France. Um, that makes no sense geographically. So, uh, I don't know what the hell's going on here. Is there anything else in the box other than the brochures? Give me a search. Wouldn't it be on the list? Maybe. Maybe not. 34 out of 74 success. Yeah, so at the bottom of the boxes as you're digging through them, it's not a physical object there, but you do find, it's at the bottom of each of those boxes, there's that weird yellow question mark symbol again. And now that you've seen it at the bottom of these boxes, you're realizing that it's also all over the travel brochures. Like it's ne- It's like next to the word Carcosa, it's on the kind of inventory you saw earlier hell you're not sure how you even missed it previously but it's on the back wall where you got the uh list from that symbol is all over the place is it like printed in the bottom of the boxes yeah like it's like a a a logo almost like a logo almost do we still hear the theater yep all right this green box is really disappointing i was hoping there'd be some guns or something in here some of that Draken's Blute or something, you know, like something that we might be able to use. Well, can I look at the, I'm going to look at the list again. Maybe there is a, something on there. The lighter. What's that about? It's a special lighter. Special lighter. If I had to put money on it, I'd say it has the yellow symbol on it. Maybe it has a special didn't, lighter. Didn't Bowman have a weird lighter? Who's Bowman? Clyde Bowman, the man that we footlocker guy. I thought he had a weird ladder that we were playing with. It was spooky. Yeah, I gave it to Pine. I didn't want to, but I gave it to Pine. That leg will be conspicuously silent. Yep. Okay. Um, so there's lighter, our names, boxes of brochures, boxes of deeds, maybe the occasional cockroach, apparently. When you say conspicuously silent, that means that silent in a way in which we would notice, right? Probably. It's like a human int check, maybe. Well, I'm looking for the lighter. If it's a special lighter. A very special one. lighter. Two successes for the human int. Jackal got 18. 30. Yoten got 10 out of 66. Success. Yeah, I'll say you both notice that jet lag is. Being a little bit weird on this one. Do you uh, know anything about that jet lag? Lighter, special lighter? Yeah, you look like you got something to say. Well, um, I mean, I happen to have a lighter. The lighter we've seen before. Is it Bowman's? Uh, I think earlier than that. Earlier than Bowman. That's when you've gotten it, Clyde. Yeah. You, ref- you recovered at the junkyard after that mission. 
Oh, I thought this was the same lighter that was in the very first yeah, mission. That's, that's yeah, that, that is yeah. Bowman. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. That's right. Uh, yeah. This is the Bowman lighter, and I'll pull it out and show them. But I, didn't, I don't think there's anything suspicious about it. I mean, I've had this for several weeks now. Or I guess a little couple weeks. Well, well, what's why? suspicious about it is that I'm wearing my special belt, and that didn't show up on the list. Yeah, but it's just a lighter. Like, I don't know. It's, it's not a just. A, it's not just lighter. It's a really cool lighter. It's a really cool lighter. <laughs> I mean, did we go through all these boxes? Is there another one like it here, or just another weird lighter? Doesn't have to be his lighter, right? I, I don't. I don't know if it's worth worth spending that much time, much time over, honestly. Also, how could he have gotten Bowman's lighter if, if you gave it to Pine? Did Pine give you that lighter, Jetlag? Um, no. I, I found it in the junkyard. That was a green box. You found it in the box? Uh, did I find it in the box? I'm trying to remember now. I think I just found it on the ground, right? Yeah, I never went inside. Yeah, yep, you never went in the box. Yeah. So it was just kind of laying around outside the green box that everyone was looking in. Well, I stayed outside and was watching. Just happened to see it on the ground. Huh. Okay, well, um, I guess it could be the same kind of lighter. I guess that's a possibility. I just don't know why it would show up on the magical list. Maybe it's standard issue for Namera Delta Green. All right, so does everyone remember what this lighter did to all of you? So anyone who's looking at kind of the lighter, did you take the lighter out or are you talking about it? I took it out. Yeah, so everyone, out. Look, everyone give me a pow check because you're looking at it. That is looking at it, I guess. I thought it was only if he lit it. Things change. I got a 76 out of 80 success. I got a 2 out of 65 success. 85 out of 85 success. Mm, just barely. What is, what is Jumper doing? Just- 41, I mean, 71 out of 60. That's a failure. I'm going to reach for that lighter. You got to reach that lighter. It's a really cool lighter. Don't you deserve a lighter like this, Jumper? I mean, I think this lighter has a purpose. It's meant to be here. I'm going to find out. We we need to find out what that purpose is. I, I think it's best if I hold on to it until we find out what that purpose is. Um... I mean, I can keep holding on to it. I don't think you really need it, right? I mean... All right, so both of you give me a strength check. <laughs> I want to pay particular attention to something about about the interaction. Sure. Because this is in character, not, you know. Which arm is she reaching with? Have we both failed. <laughs> yeah, so the lighter kind of, like, so you both kind of start wrestling for it, and the lighter goes kind of... It, drops and goes spinning across the ground of the box again. Kind of hits the ground with a loud ping noise. Everyone give me another pow check. Everyone? Everyone. Mm. 91 out of 80 failure. 36 out of 85 success. 35 success. 16 out of 65 success. All right, Jackal, you're going to dive for this lighter. Give me that. <laughs> Jeez, I didn't know you wanted right. that bad. I'll hang on to this for now, okay? Fine, but I think it has a purpose, and you might have to let it go. Put it in my pocket. Yeah, well, I want it back after this is all done. Yeah, uh, jet lag, give me a sand check on this one. Yeah. All right, you're going to have to take one point of sand damage, but you can hear that lighter talking to you. This son of a bitch stole your lighter. It's not his lighter. It's your lighter. Only you deserve to have a lighter this cool. Damn straight, I do. Um, I'll let it slide for right now. I will sure try to steal it back later, unbeknownst to Jackal. Of course. <laughs> I didn't get an answer. Which arm did she reach with for the lighter? Doesn't actually matter in this case, so use your imagination on that one. It, it wouldn't have mattered either way. I know, I just yeah. didn't care. Uh, we can it say it was the arm that vanished. Probably my That's what I mean. Arm. 
Which is my right arm, which is the arm I stuck in the water. Okay. All right. Sorry, we can move on. That's fine. I, I will throw an Agus as we're talking about the arm again. The arm's more or less back to normal by now. It's been kind of out of the water for long enough. It's depruned. It's got some of its color back. It's no longer as kind of stiff and waterlogged as it felt. It's no longer wet, obviously. Your clothing is dried out even some. Well, should we just take a couple of these brochures or something? I mean, what do we need from this place? I would take the land information the brochure, yeah, definitely a couple of brochures. All right, I'll, I'll look into the box and try to grab like, I don't know, three different looking brochures. There are a couple different versions. All right, so you grab some brochures. Yep. Yeah, nothing are, bad happens as a result of that. Like you just, they're just travel brochures. Is there a source to the stage sounds that we could follow, or is it like just kind of permeating the room? That sounds like a search. Oh, 71 out of 56 failure. You can't find any source of where the sound is coming from. Agent Jumper, you also cannot find any source that the sound is coming from. It's just there, like you're backstage of a show. Well, I feel like I'm hearing voices, and I'd rather get out of this this, uh, strange, noisy closet. Uh, we can't make out what they're saying, can we? No, you can hear they're calling for places and stuff like that. There's like some mundane kind of chatter going on. Like it's nothing of super notes. People are like, oh, like, where's my wig, et cetera, et cetera. Like it's normal. It's English. Of- yeah. Okay. Or at least you're hearing it as English. And there's not like another building connected to this one, is there? Uh, there's a storage locker, but again, like the way the sound is sounding to you, it doesn't track like it's either it's coming from any of the storage lockers that kind of tangentially touch this thing or it's not coming from anywhere obvious kind of thing like but at the same time it's too volumetric to be coming from like a hidden speaker probably like it's it really feels like you are somehow standing in the back of house of a play just from the sound aspects of it it's not looping or anything it's like it's a still constant kind of Maybe it's gone on to be the longest five minutes ever, but it's still kind of people rushing around trying to get ready for stuff. You might hear the occasional kind of thing you would immediately recognize, but none of you are roadies or actors or anything like that. You would just kind of hear that stuff anyway. Any voices we recognize? Um, give me an alertness like check a on that. person? Sure. Dale. <laughs> nah, it's just kind of voices. Like, they're not clear enough. You can, like, even totally track them down. Maybe you occasionally hear a voice you might recognize, but nah, not really. Like they're not they're not that clear, oddly enough. Well, does anybody want anything else in here? Jump, are you taking some of those deeds with you? You're taking pictures or what? I'm gonna take pictures of all of them. The whole box. Like, is, is it a whole box? Like how many documents are we talking about here? It's several kinds, it's like boxes you pick up from a printer or something. Like several boxes? Yeah. Jeez. Um, I'm just going to take, like, take an assortment of several. You said there were several different kinds? Yeah. Like, I'm just going to spread out, like, several different kinds of all the different kinds I've spotted and just take pictures of those and then put them up. Just sure. so I have, like, these are all the different types that I saw. Ah, oh, the noise is driving me crazy. I guess that's it. Unless anybody else could think of uh, anything else to take from here. Could we take the list? Or is it attached to the wall? Oh, you can walk around with it if you want. I'll take the list. Yeah, so as you leave, you uh, so you're walking out of the box now? Yeah. Are you looking at the list as you leave the box? I am. I want to see if it updates. as we Yeah, do so stuff. as you step out of the box with the list, you do see your name and... One uh, and one inventory list removed from the list. Give me a sand check. <laughs> Nineteen out of seventy-one success. Fine. That list update jet lag. Uh, yeah, it said I left the room. Some Harry Potter shit right there. Mischief managed. I was gonna say we should probably destroy it as it appeared to have our uh, actual identities, but um. I guess so long as we're not in that box, then we're not on it. 
You know, honestly, I'm kind of interested to keep it and see if anything shows up in there. I agree. There, so other than cockroaches. Yeah, you'll know when someone puts something in the green box. That's a good idea. Jet lag, check that every once in a while. We'll do. Let's see if somebody else's name shows up or something. What's next? I mean, we were going to come back to that makeshift museum at nighttime. All right, so also, now that one of you is outside, you notice a lot of time has passed, as best you can tell. Like, the sun is all of a sudden setting. You were in that box, for, you were in that storage locker for maybe like a half hour or something. It was the middle of the day, but the sun is now setting. Uh, if I look at my cell phone, does it have a time? Yeah, it's the correct time for the sun setting. It's early evening mm-hmm. kind of thing. Uh, hey, y'all, it's, uh, we have some time issues going on now. The sun is setting. I did not think we were in there that long, but apparently it's been several hours. I thought it was like 2 p.m. or something. 3 p.m. Jeez. Yeah, it's a little hard to believe. Come out and see for yourself. Sun is setting. Well, you're right. All right. Do we feel up to an operation still tonight? What What do you guys want to do? Should we just go back to our hotels? And I mean, I vote we continue investigating today. Things continue to get weirder, and I'm worried the longer we wait, the weirder things will get. And I'm worried that things will get real weird after nightfall just because, you know, that seems to track. But um, all right, let's uh, let's get out of here. Jumper Jackal, what do you think? Yeah, I don't really feel like waiting around for something to happen to us. I mean, I think we're here for a reason. We need to stop it. At the same time, I don't even know what the next step is. I mean, we've nobody's tried to stop us. You know, we just basically walked into a town and went and saw a trippy lake and walked out. I mean, what do we do next? Well, remember what brought you here. You are, in theory, like a, by a letter from uh, the good Charles. You, uh, Herr Felder, donated some items to their museum. It's possible whatever you donate is causing this. Like it also could be like some type of like because you've met Herr Felder, it's affecting you differently. Like it could all be those items. Like you do have in theory a original mission you could follow up on. I mean, is it time that we you know, show our badges to this? Xanthos guy and tell him we're here to see the, the item that was donated? Um, if you think that would do us any good, that actually hadn't occurred to me. But uh, I'm at a loss. So if nobody has a better idea other than breaking in in the middle of the night or making him let us in, then I mean, th- those are the two. Does anyone have any other options other than just cut and run jumper's got her arm back i got nothing i think we should just take jackal's suggestion let's get to the heart of the matter ask him to show us what we got going on so which credentials are we going to use epa <laughs> you can tell him that lake is illegal we are here under the guise of the epa so we come up with a convenient epa excuse to get in the building i say we go with that if not I mean, I'm DEA. I could, in theory, uh, claim that I need to get in there. I don't know. Um, Doesn't seem the most likely, but, I mean, arbitrary museum in the middle of nowhere could be a front for something, I could argue. Open to other suggestions as well. Yeah, I don't... I can understand citing him on the lake. I don't know why that would require us to get into his museum. I am perfectly happy to use my credentials to get us in there, but we need a good story. I guess to kind of explain the DEA angle, Felder could have been involved in drug smuggling or something, or so claim you could so claim to do with that, and that you're trying to track down items that left his possession. It's a bit flimsy, but it's definitely a way you could get in with the DEA. Yeah, it sounds more feasible to me than EPA. Well, and also, like, there's no reason to doubt the lake is legal. Yeah, I guess I could believe that it's not legal. I just don't know why we'd that would get us into a museum. Mm-hmm. 
that's the the gap I'm missing here in our story. Yeah. Could we claim that the museum somehow polluting the lake? I don't know. Wasn't built right. The uh, lake isn't usable. Something to do with soil contamination or something. They the materials used too close to water or some crap like that. Is that any of that track for you? Jet lag. Uh, yeah, we could maybe spin that. Like, there's something nasty in the lake we found, and we're trying to find the source. And maybe we have to check out all the local buildings to see if it's been leaching something into it. That could maybe work. I mean, I guess at this point we got the badge. We didn't need a plausible story, but it doesn't have to be super great potentially. So we can try that if you like. I mean, the other option is DEA. And what do you what do you think about just dropping Felder's name and seeing how he reacts? I think that's actually the best bet. Let's see how he reacts to Felder's name. Tell him, you know, we were just basically just drop the the ruse and be like, listen here. I know what we said earlier, but we're DEA and we know that Felder sent you something. We believe it's drug related as we raided his place. So DEA story? Well, DEA story with the Felder name drop. Sure. Let's do that. Try and track down Charles Xanthus to drop that federal agency hammer on him. Yep. All right. So that means back to the town. Let's go for it. Yep. I'm not driving. (laughs) I will drive this time. He's the. You think I would be comfortable behind the wheel? I mean, someone's arm did just kind of magically, paranormally, whatever, really reappear in the car. That's enough to spook anyone, no matter how good a driver you are. (laughs) Saying I have a track record of taking too long and stuff. All right, cool. So it's back to the town. It's back to Brookville. All right. So, yeah, you get in the car and you drive, and it's... You realize how far away you drove coming here but definitely it's it takes some time more time than maybe you thought it did last time but as you're driving there you seem to kind of pass the occasional weird thing like and it's not like like it's a like a street sign or kind of like a highway sign that says like all the locations you'd expect and then also you are now entering the city of carcosa and it's not like someone painted it up there. It's not like it's new. It's as it's always been. Like, it's just the road workers put up a sign that said you are now entering the city of Carcosa. And you pass some other stuff that's like eight miles to the outskirts of Carcosa. You also, you stuff for Brookville and stuff like that. And I don't know, nothing. It's strange, but nothing kind of leaps out as to kind of emphasize just how strange this stuff might be. And- 